everyone, it's my great pleasure to have with me today Professor Peter Krapp, who is a professor in the Department of Film and Media Studies in the School of Humanities. Hi, Peter. Hello. Thanks for having ah. me. <laughs> Thank you for accepting this invitation. So, Peter, tell us what uh, recipes you are showing us today. Well, I thought that... Um, I'm going to make a meal out of two dishes. Um, to start, I'm going to make a, a German onion tart. And then I'm going to have uh, a main course uh, that is um, kale and pork. It sounds wow. very simple, and they're actually both pretty simple dishes. Um, but um, I thought that you know, there might be a nice uh, combination. Although, um, truth be told, they're probably... Uh, not very likely to be served together if you're at a typical German restaurant or house because one of the dishes, the onion tart, is much more characteristic of the south and southwest of Germany. And the other one, the kale uh, and pork uh, dish, is actually much more typical of the northern areas of Germany. Uh, like a lot of nation states, Germany is a patchwork of different regions and different accents and different cuisines. And of course, recipes don't respect borders either. So uh, <laughs> the, you, the German onion tart is something that you can also find in Alsace in uh, France. You can find it across the border into Austria, into Switzerland. Um, so, you know, there are two regional specialties um, that I both like, and I like cooking, so I thought I'd um, try combining those two dishes. Wonderful. So, um, can you tell us a little bit more about the reasons for your choice? Is it comfort food, in a sense, or you have family memories, or uh, whatever you would like to share with us? Well, um, so German cuisine might not be the most famous uh, cuisine in the world. Uh, I'm not going to tell jokes about French or Italian <laughs> or, uh, you know, um, <laughs> the famous exports of cuisines. Um, but um, I am a product of uh, a complicated story. Um, you know, I was born in Switzerland but my parents are from Austria and I grew up in Germany. So three countries divided by the same language. Um, mm -hmm. And um, I went to graduate school, uh, um, PhD in, in Konstanz, which is right on the border between Austria and uh, Germany, out of Switzerland. Uh, so I have some family ties and some ties of my own to that Southern region. Um, which produces wine, you know, actually pretty good wine, less well-known for export. I guess they drink most of their own product. <laughs> and uh, for that region, an, an onion tart is a typical accompaniment. So, you know, it's comfort food in that sense that, you know, let's say you're a student, uh, you, you go out, um, it's cheap, uh, it's filling, uh, it's can be spicy, it has sufficient uh, fat to soak up some of the alcohol that you consume. So um, that's the story of the onion tart. And the other dish I've actually only discovered a little bit later in life. Um, Californians tend to associate kale with eating healthy or a crunchy salad or whatever, but this is actually a boiled kale. Mm -hmm. And it's quite a salty dish uh, because you use a uh, smoked salted piece of pork to make the broth. Um, so that's a very typical northern dish. My parents coming from Vienna um, did not actually venture very far north. Um, so I had to discover that part of the German speaking culture for myself later in life. Um, but I really like it. I find that especially for cold weather. And, you know, it's all relative. You know, it's not that cold here in California, but it is cold in Germany in the winter. And it's a very typical dish that you can find all across northern Germany um, uh, at the market. You know, if you go um, across the marketplace, the square, there'll be somebody with a steaming pot of, of kale, uh, green kale, grünkohl, 
and, and pork or sausages or both uh, served with it. Uh, now, the typical, if you want to be correct, the typical side dish for the kale and pork would be boiled potatoes. Yes. But since we already have the onion tart to start, I figured, you know, I don't have to show anybody how to boil a potato. Uh, <laughs> we'll leave that off. <laughs> That's great. And what do you typically drink with these dishes? More beer? I mean, it's more on the side of beer or wine or what would you recommend? Um, I think wine, I'm not a big beer drinker. Um, I think, you know, beer would work certainly with the kale and, and pork because like I said, it's, it comes out quite salty. Um, but, you know, with the onion tart, certainly, you know, typically um, a, a, a young wine, you know, something inexpensive that you get in a tavern, in a student pub, uh, whatever. And for the, for the kale and pork, you could continue with that wine. I think it would not be inappropriate. Although, of course, uh, northern Germany doesn't, doesn't grow a lot of its own wine. Maybe with global warming, the wine-growing regions will keep creeping further north. But, uh, yes, yes, uh, indeed. Scary. Uh, but uh, it might be one of the consequences. They're both dishes that will help you soak up alcohol if, if you want to consume alcohol. Now... You know, if we're cooking with a professor and talking to students, we're not encouraging heavy alcohol. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but but it, it does work together. Yeah, and sometimes, particularly in Germany, in France and other countries, not, not so in Italy, but even here I found very nice ciders. So mm -hmm. sometimes if we want to just, you know... <laughs> make suggestions that students, that we feel comfortable passing on to students, then I would think that maybe cider would be another way of accompanying these dishes. Or um, what about the tradition of Gulwein in, uh, wine, sorry, in, uh, in, uh, in Germany and uh, this wonderful uh, idea of, you know, buying your cup of warm wine with a lot of uh, uh, spices, um, which is very typical, I think, particularly during the winter uh, around Christmas, but maybe also beyond mm -hmm. Christmas, uh, after Christmas. From, there's a fifth season, uh, sort of starts in November and goes through February or March. In some areas, it's also overlapping with Carnival, um, but it's certainly the cold uh, weather season and Glühwein uh, goes really well. Uh, I myself have, you know, I was lucky I had a, a fellowship in Germany um, in the fall of uh, last year, and uh, I regularly went out uh, to the market, uh, to the square to have that green kale and pork with sausages and potatoes and maybe a, a sip of blue wine, you know, keep you warm. Mild wine. Uh, it's not my favorite drink uh, when I'm in California because I don't feel like I need to have that uh, warming up. But if you're in a cold weather zone, uh, it's certainly a, a, a delight. Um, yes, sir. Um, I've been uh, making that onion tart here quite a bit. Uh, important warning, you know, since I'm speaking to an Italian colleague, um, some people will see that and they'll try to say, oh, it looks like a pizza. You know, no, it's not a pizza. It's very, very different from a pizza. They know <laughs> the topping is different. It's a tart. Right? It's actually much more of a um, of, uh, uh, French inflected thing rather than the Italian. Uh, mm -hmm. Careful with the label. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> but anyway, I have very fond memories of my 18 months in Heidelberg as an Alexander von Humboldt fellow several years ago. And, um, and you know, I for one, I'm all in favor of German cuisine, of German wine, and also... Um, I mean, I've always found the quality of the products used excellent. So maybe they may not be the most elaborate dishes, but uh, uh, the quality of the meat, for instance, has always been uh, extremely, extremely good compared to even what you can find in countries that maybe are more renowned for their culinary tradition. But I, I've always appreciated that aspect of German cuisine and wonderful wine and wonderful beer and uh, the traditional blue wine has always been 
very nice. I mean, I still remember going around the market, the you know the, the, the town markets in um, in in Heidelberg and uh, towns nearby. So I think, and the other thing that I remember is really uh, maybe also that is also something true of Austria. There's still a tradition of proper cafes, pubs, where people go and eat a meal, but may also read a newspaper and uh, a book. In, and it's a different pace, an altogether different pace uh, of life that um, I, I, I absolutely adore. I don't know what you think about that pace of life here in California. We're always running, running, running. <laughs> or right now we are not going to many places, of course, due to, to COVID, but I mean, still... <laughs> uh, that's the uh, that's the fascination of uh, um, transporting different pieces of cultural heritage. There are places in Southern California where you can get um, German uh, dishes, German groceries, because there are a lot of German immigrants in the middle of the 19th century who come to Northern California, I mean, Southern California, to uh, naming places like Anaheim, which is a mm -hmm. you know, German German um, uh, word, German origin. But you know, when I'm in California, I don't really miss it. I just thought that you know, if you challenge me to make a meal, I'm not going to make something from places that I have less of a connection to. I'm going to try to uh, you know present something that I have uh, maybe some stories to tell about. Um, the only other thing that I would say, if, I, if I'm honest here, after decades in California, I miss a certain quality of bread. You know, there's mm -hmm. uh, Central European, Middle European cuisine uh, has many different things that I miss, um, but I, I don't have to have them when I'm here. There are other things that I really enjoy here. You know, we have an amazing variety of um, Asian food and Mexican yeah. food and so on. I enjoy that. And you don't get that uh, that easily in Europe. But I do miss uh, an old-fashioned uh, bread. And, um, and by the way, the onion tart I would typically make with the sourdough, just like I, I've been making bread at home to find the kind of bread that I want. You know, I started making it mm -hmm. myself. Like everybody else in quarantine uh, times and in COVID times, um, but it doesn't have to be made with sourdough. Um, I think there's a, there's, a, there's a difference in flavor, and it might be a little healthier to do it with sourdough rather than instant yeast. Um, but, you know, I enjoy being here. I'm a dual citizen. Uh, you know, I can make uh, just as much of a claim to being an American because I've spent more time here now than anywhere else. Um, but these are two dishes that I like from... Uh, German-speaking areas in Europe, and uh, maybe you'll try them, maybe you'll enjoy them, um, maybe they'll just uh, be a, a bizarre excursion uh, into things that are outside your normal uh, pattern of consumption, but I think they're good. Well, I'm going to try them for sure, and I recommend them all heartedly to our uh, audience. So, Thank you so much, Peter, for uh, being with us and for these recipes and for sharing your memories and experiences around these recipes. And to all of you out there, goodbye and enjoy. Thank you. Thank Take you. Bye-bye. Hello, I'm Peter Krupp, and I'm gonna make a German meal with two traditional dishes. One is a dish with a lot of kale. Um, I got four bunches of kale here. They're gonna be slow cooked um, with pork. And it's gonna be served traditionally also with sausages or um, with another piece of ham. And uh, before that, kind of as an appetizer, I'm gonna make a traditional German onion tart. Um, now, those of you who know about German cooking will object right away that those are not necessarily from the same region. The kale and pork dish 
um, in German known as Grünkohl mit Pinkel, is mostly popular in the northern and uh, northeastern areas of Germany, whereas uh, an onion tart, um, which has many different names and nicknames in different um, dialects, is much more popular in the south and the southwest of Germany. Um, but, you know, we're in California, so I'm going to mix them uh, together. And um, the onion tart is uh, typically made with sweet onions and, uh, you know, some, some bacon and some uh, uh, strong cheese. I'm going to use Gruyere, which is actually a Swiss cheese. Um, any kind of cheese with a, a quite a, a strong flavor is going to be good for that. For the crust of the onion tart, I'm going to use a, a mixer to uh, first put together the dry ingredients. Uh, There's about a cup of flour, 200 grams of flour, a uh, tablespoon of salt, and then I'm going to add uh, 100 grams of butter. It's about half of this. Um, and I'm going to add 100 grams of creme fraiche, which is cultured uh, cream. And um, I'm going to pulse that together. So you put the flour and salt in your mixer and then um, you add the butter and the creme fraiche and uh, you pulse it until um, it forms a dough. You could knead it by hand um, if you want, but it's quite a, quite a bit of labor and it takes time. Um, so it's easier to do that in the mixer. So I'm going to use my Vitamix. It's going to be noisy, so I won't film that, um, but I'll show you the result. And some people like to add yeast, uh, instant dry yeast. Uh, I'm not such a great fan of using yeast. Um, when I bake, I like to have a uh, sourdough starter instead of instant yeast. But for a crust like this in the mixer, you might Put a little bit of your dry yeast and, and water, add a little sugar or honey um, and activate the yeast uh, before you add that to the dough mixture. If you prefer to mix the dough by hand, uh, it's going to be quite wet. So you want to incorporate as much of the flour as you can as you uh, squeeze the butter and creme fraiche and salt and yeast and a tiny bit of sugar and you know sugar and salt has to be in there. Um, it's going to be a salty dish but it's basically like um, a crust for almost any tart. You could you could use other toppings but we're going to have a salty uh, topping for this and it becomes kind of like uh, play-doh, still kind of wet, sticky. Um, and I'm going to let this uh, rest in the refrigerator. Some people say at least half an hour, other people say an hour. Some people say you should wrap it, um, which helps the flour absorb all of the moisture that comes out of the other ingredients. Other people say, you know, you don't have to wrap it. You can let it sit at room temperature. Um, do it as you like to do with a, with a dough for a tart. Um, I personally think that it's a good idea to wrap it in a little bit of saran wrap um, and keep it in the fridge because remember that's, there's cream and butter and uh, regardless of what temperature in your kitchen, uh, it's probably a safer, good idea to keep that in the fridge until you, um, you need that dough ball uh, to be rolled out. The dough is going to be rolled out. We're going to fit it on our cake um, uh, tart pan and we're going to top it. There's a French version of this onion tart. Uh, recipes do not stop at borders uh, and neither does uh, drinking uh, wine with onion tarts. So there's a French version where uh, you're much more careful with the onions. You only slice them very thin uh, you, so that you have big, round, thin slices of the onion that you can then layer in a very pretty pattern and the cheese goes underneath. So if you want to do something that looks nice, um, like, a, like a fancy tart and a 
pâtisserie, you can try that, put the cream and the cheese underneath and then put the, put the onions on top. And the reason I don't do that is because you have to be very careful that they don't uh, look too brown. And it actually tastes the same, it looks a little bit different. So um, whether you chop the onions or make uh, nice round slices that you can uh, use up, uh, to lay a pattern, um, that's up to you. But here we have the four ingredients, uh, the rest of the creme fraiche, the onions, the cheese, and the bacon that are gonna be the toppings for the tart when we're ready. So you mix your uh, bacon and onions in the pan, you heat them up, stir fry that, and when you think it's just about done and ready to be transferred to the uh, topping for the tart, some people like to use uh, black pepper, so you can grind some black pepper on top. Um, other people prefer to put some smoked paprika um, on it or both. Um, you're not going to need a lot of salt because the bacon is already a little bit salty. Um, but of course, salt is just an amplifier, so you can add some salt um, if you want a, a bigger flavor. All right, so you're checking for some holes. You don't want it to rip. But if your tart bottom is more or less smooth, you could put it back in the refrigerator if you're a perfectionist or even in the freezer. Some people go into extreme lengths, but I think this is going to be fine. Uh, here I have my mix of onions and bacon. I'm going to add the remaining creme fresh. So this is going to be quite the healthy mixture of cream and bacon and sauteed onions. Don't worry if it looks like it's going to be runny. Um, the moment you put cream um, at a different temperature, um, it kind of becomes almost liquid, but uh, that's fine. It's really there for um, not, not, not the whole things together, but for flavor. And speaking of flavor, I, I invited all of you to try some cracked pepper on this. Um, I'm going to grind some pepper on top here and I'm also going to um, add a little bit of this um, ground paprika because um, it adds a little bit of oomph, adds a little bit of color as well, although the color is going to be covered over uh, by the melting cheese. All right, so that's our topping for the onion tart. We're gonna put the cheese on top after I've transferred the onion bacon uh, cream mix. Okay, there it is. If you don't like paprika, try thyme. Um, that goes more into the French direction again. Uh, you know, recipes don't know, uh, don't respect borders. Um, whatever you do, do not call this a German pizza. Italians get very mad when you call things pizza that are not pizza. This is not a pizza, despite what it might look like to you. Try it and you'll see that it's actually very different from a pizza. It's a tart. It's an onion tart. Maybe I've used more bacon than other people would. Uh, maybe I've used um, less of uh, thyme or other ingredients that people might uh, like. There are many regional varieties. Again, this is a dish that's very popular in southern Germany, southwest Germany on the border with France, on the border with uh, Austria, with Switzerland. And um, I've seen this offered even all the way into uh, southern Switzerland, northern Italy, um, as something of a rustic dish that goes well with um, a number of different uh, kind of wines and other alcoholic drinks. So this is, this is drinking cuisine. And I'm going to put this in the oven for as long as it takes. Just keep an eye on how the cheese melts. You don't want it to get too brown on top, but you do want it to be uh, cooked through fully underneath. Um, and, you know, I, 
I'm going to try to distribute the cheese very evenly, although like I said, Gruyere is a cheese that melts really well and it tastes great when it's melted and it's going to distribute itself a little uh, more efficiently as well. Here's the onion tart. Nicely browned. And warm out of the oven. It's a nice appetizer for our meal. As a first step, uh, I'm going to take a piece of cured salted pork. Um, I, this is basically a piece of uh, fatty uh, pork uh, bacon that's uh, it's also been cured and salted. Um, and I'm going to put it in cold water and basically simmer it for 15 minutes. And that's going to make the broth that I'm going to use to cook the kale. Okay, just for demonstration, here is, uh, I cut this up. This is a smoked, cured, very salty, very fat, uh, smoky piece of pork bacon. And I put that in quite a bit of water. And I'm going to let it uh, simmer for about 15 minutes. I also have a piece of pork of ham. This is uh, not uh, cured, it's just smoked. Um, or you can just sort of any kind of sausages, typically pork sausages. Um, uh, whether they're cooked or not, um, uh, a lot of sausages that we get in the shop here are, you know, fully cooked um, and that's fine. Um, they're going to be cooked on, on top of a bed of kale that I'm going to uh, cook once I have this uh, broth simmered. All right, so I'm going to take a deep, big pan. I put some um, schmaltz in there. You can use margarine, you can use butter. Um, you can use duck fat or goose fat if you have any leftover. Um, this is actually uh, duck fat from um, roasting a duck. And um, once that's melted, I'm going to add a little bit of the leftover onion so that I didn't put into the onion tart uh, before I saute the kale in this. Um, and I'm going to top it with the liquid from the smoked salted pork that I've been simmering for quite a while. So um, the kale is going to simmer down and it's going to accept quite a bit of the flavor from that pork broth and of course, uh, from the dot set as well. Okay, so I'm chopping in a little bit of onion in here before I put in a lot of kale. I'll put it all tips. The kale is going to cook down a lot once I add the liquid. But first, I'm going to get this all in here. I'm going to discard that because it's got another piece of stem in it. Some people like eating that. They get more crunch. And some people prefer this kind of fish to be really smooth. You know, like cooked spinach or, or any other kind of cooked dark greens. Alright, so it's getting hot. I'm gonna now go and get the rock.
This is the broth with the pieces of smoked salted pork. And I use that to bit by bit cook down the pig. Don't put it on the, in all at once because it won't be cooking anymore. And we're going to need a lot of that liquid because the kale will absorb very, very quickly all of the liquid that we're adding here. So now I'm going to turn down the heat and we'll actually let this simmer for about 30 minutes covered on a low temperature so it doesn't evaporate too much of the liquid. All right, the next step then, I've added all the broth, I've added the uh, bacon, and the next step is I've chopped up some ham. This is already cooked, so it doesn't have to be in there for a very long time. Um, if you use sausages that are already cooked, you just put them on top. If you use uncooked sausages, they will of course have to spend a little bit more time on top of this bed of kale cooking uh, until um, everything comes together as a dish. All right, and here I am with a bowl of sauteed kale with ham, because I did not use sausages in this one, but you can put sausages on there as well. 